Hi everyone, I'll be talking about complicated urinary tract infections today. And I will type this as urinary tract infection lesson three. Lesson one is all about pyelonephritis. Lesson two is about cystitis and uncomplicated urinary tract infection. Today is lesson three and it will be about complicated urinary tract infection. Okay, let's go. About pyelonephritis, you can check my video on pyelonephritis. It's already out there. Please kindly check my channel for details. Okay, complicated urinary tract infection. All episodes of urinary tract infection in men is regarded as complicated urinary tract infection until otherwise proven. Very common among older men. It increases with age, as associated with recurrent urinary tract infection. It's also associated with abdominal genital urinary tract anatomy. It's formed like functional abnormality and occurs with individuals using indwelling catheter. Examples of complicated urinary tract infection will include urinary tract infection in males, secondary to hydronephrosis, secondary to kidney stone, colobacaca fistula, that is the opening between the colon and the bladder. And the individual is now having urinary tract infection, that is complicated urinary tract infection. Also, individual with decreased immunity are now down with urinary tract infection, that is complicated urinary tract infection. For example, HIV infected individuals or probably the individuals with HIV and AIDS. People using steroids because with steroids there will be immune suppression. And also chemotherapy indiscriminate damage of brain cells will lead to bone marrow suppression and of course immune suppression. Diabetes mellitus is also known for immunosuppressive effects. And elderly people, the older you are, particularly the malnourished ones, the lower the immunity. Disease modifying anti-rheumatic drugs, in fact, it is required that some will have to screen for some diseases that could come up, I mean, that could be acquired if the individual is on disease modifying anti-rheumatic drugs like Remicade and Humira and the rest like that because they have profound effects on immunity. That's what people taking them will have to be screened for fungi infection and tuberculosis even before they commence treatment. Still uncomplicated urinary tract infection, urinary tract infection and atypical organisms or Multidrug resistance organism is tagged as being complicated. Patients who had undergone transplant, particularly renal transplant, and now have a renal tract infection, is complicated. Individual who had just undergone surgery or radiation, or we call it radiotherapy, now having UTI is complicated. So we've just gone through all the different ways or different forms, different situations under which complicated urinary tract infection could be diagnosed. But what are the possible positive agents? Uh, when we were in school in those days, we used to have morning KEPS, K-E-E-P-P-S. So today let's go over, we have more on the list than that now. So we have Klebsiella, we have Escherichia coli, we have Proteus mirabilis, Enterobacter, Pseudomonas ferruginosa, 
Enterococcus fecalis, Chitobata species, Group B Streptococcus, Seratia species, and of course, sexually transmitted infections like Chlamydia trachomatis, Mycoplasma, and Trichomonas. Investigations to be done, of course, we have to. And I will start with urinalysis. And in urinalysis, we're looking out for nitrites, leukocyte esterase, bacteria. We can embark on urine microscopy culture and sensitivity so that we'll be able to pick the exact antibiotics for the positive agents. We can have a complete blood count with hematocrit and web count. Mainstream urine via catheter will be fine. And we have to get that done before we start our antimicrobial therapy, except this is an acute severe case where we can take sample and start antibiotics or we can start antibiotics empirically before taking sample if the case is so severe. We can have cystoscopy done, ultrasound, because of possible anatomical anomalies that might be responsible. CT, magnetic resonance imaging, X-rays with dye for intravenous pyrogram. You can have surgery in UTI if UTI is being complicated or actually caused by a kidney stone. We can have extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy or percutaneous nephrolithotomy, depending on the size. Okay? If there is benign prostatic apertrophy or prostatic carcinoma that has not metastasized, we can have prostatectomy. And if there is stricture, that could be surgically corrected with retroplasty. Reflux causing backflow could be surgically corrected as well. The clinical features here will be fever, cheese, rigors, vomiting, sometimes in males, crater pain, frequency, urgency, dysuria, or nocturia. Possibility of pyuria. Low back pain, flank pain, suprapubic pain, hematuria, fast smelling urine, and cloudy urine. What are the risk factors here? Females do have shorter urethra than men. And because of that, they do come down with urinary tract infection more than men. And previous history of UTI could be the reason for the new UTI. Diabetes mellitus, spinal cord injury, trauma, kidney stones, that is nephrolithosis, stricture of the urethra, posterior urethra valve. Still on risk factors. Menopause, obesity, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, benign prostatic apertrophy, prostatic carcinoma. Still on risk factors, some procedures like bladder catheterization, HIV, homosexuality certain medications, and immunosuppression. If we are dealing with complicated urinary tract infection and it's so severe, uh, we need intravenous antibiotics. There are lots to choose from. You can choose aminoglycosides, and examples are gentamicin, tubramycin, and amikacin. You can have carbapenems, and you have Etrapenem sodium or meropenem here, and loss of cephalosporins like cefazolin, 
Kefrosin, Kefotazin, Keftazidin, and Keftrazon. And also choose intravenous antibiotics like fluoroquinolones, example, we include profloxacin and levofloxacin. If this individual is not allergic to penicillin, you can choose I mean, penicillin. And of course, I will go first for tazosin, that is, papyracillin, tazobactam combined. I can use termitin, that is like carcinine and clavulanate combined. Urinary tract infection complications. I'm not talking about complicated urinary tract infection, okay? I want to talk about the aftermath of having urinary tract infection. So the complications that could follow if someone has urinary tract infection. So there are two different things, complicated urinary tract infection and urinary tract infection complications. So now it's about complications after having urinary tract infection. So there's possibility of bacteremia, sepsis, sepsis seeming shock. In men, there's possibility of prostatitis, prostatic abscess. Epididymitis, pyelonephritis, orchitis, retrostrictures, kidney ulcers, repeat urinary tract infection, and possible death, particularly in elderly and immunocompromised. So, lots of elderly will actually die from urinary tract infection because they could come down with sepsis and sepsis shock. And sometimes, People will be looking out for fever and chills and rigor. You might not have those tetter signs in elderly. Okay? Don't wait till you have you no know, classical fever in them. No. You might miss the diagnosis. There's one more complication I want to talk about that is emphysematous pyelonephritis. That's a very serious situation. In that case, there's gas in the kidney and paranephric space, usually affecting the left kidney, and it is multifocal bacterial nephritis. Usually, it's a necrotizing form and common in diabetes mellitus patients. So, when somebody is having diabetes mellitus and is having UTI, we have to treat aggressively because they could. It having a protizing form with multifocal bacterial nephritis and gas in the kidney and paranephric space, particularly on the left side. And with that, I've come to the end of this presentation. Kindly subscribe to my channel so that you can get my presentations immediately they are published. Thank you. I appreciate it.